So thank you for joining us here today. I get to describe something that's very near and dear to my heart. I, um, myself, I spent many, many, many years in higher education. And when I was in higher education and out talking to secondary students, my conversation was always about go to high school or go to college, go to college, go to college. And then I had the privilege of joining the SME Education Foundation where my message was able to reach many more students. And you're gonna learn more about that. Students who, yes, are interested in going to college, but students who are interested in going directly into the workforce, students who are interested in pursuing an apprenticeship, students who are interested in going to trade school. So many more populations are we able to reach through the Prime program. So let me just explain to you a little bit about the Prime program and thank you to my panelists for coming all the way from Georgia. Um, very excited to profile for you what we are doing with Think Academy in Georgia. So do we have the slides up? No slides? The clicker, the clicker. There we go. No, we don't. There, no, we don't. There we go. All right, so we are here to talk about the Prime program. Um, SME, as we all know, SME, formerly the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, SME is the thought leader in manufacturing and engineering all across North America. We have multiple business units at SME, one of which is the Education Foundation, and I work for the, S the SME Education Foundation. Within the foundation, we are called to respond to three areas of responsibility. We are asked to respond to the responsibility to inspire the future generation of manufacturing and engineering talent, to prepare them, and um, to support them. And we do that through three distinct programs. We have a program of scholarships. Many of you joined us last night when we gave away nearly a million dollars worth of scholarships. We also have student summits, which take place at the SME events, which occur all across the country, where we invite in secondary students and their educators to join us for a day. And then we have the Prime program. So let me advance this. Nope. So Prime is an acronym. Prime stands for Partnership Response in Manufacturing Education. Prime partners private industry with academia to build custom manufacturing and engineering programs in high schools across the country. We provide equipment, curriculum, teacher training, student scholarships, of course, we just mentioned that, and funding for extracurricular activities. And what is really unique, we provide program sustainability to the schools. So after we've put in place a prime program, and the budget on that program is no longer active the following year, we give the schools the opportunity to share with us what they've been doing and to respond to the question, do you need more funds? So we pr frequently provide grants of nearly five to $10,000 for a program once it's been fully built out to maintain the program. Folks, I've been in the grant world for a long, long, long time and it is very unusual for a grant program to provide the funding to sustain itself. In fact, usually creating a sustainability plan, plan is one of the criteria for even being awarded a grant program in the first place. So hats off to SME and to the SME Education Foundation and to all of the funders that join us in providing prime programs into the schools that participate in the program. All right. I will advance this. What is also unique about the Prime program is that we have tailored curriculum plans designed specifically around the need of manufacturers in the community surrounding the schools. So if you look at this map, each one of these dark blue states has at least one Prime program in it. We are a network of 110 schools across 23 states. And a program in Helena, Montana, I pick on Helena all the time, a program in Helena, Montana, which is focused on machining and fabrication because they have Boeing in their backyard and many of their students go to work for Boeing later on. 
does not look anything like a program down in Texas, in San Angelo, where they are preparing students for employment in a um, light bulb manufacturing facility, or any of the programs we're going to be talking about in Georgia. Every program that we put in place is unique, uniquely designed for the manufacturing world in that student's backyard. We serve 10,000 students across the country. And you might be asking yourself, what are our outcomes? I'm really proud of this. We've been told by graduating seniors, once they've spent their high school career in the prime program, that 91% of those students graduating plan to pursue manufacturing and engineering based employment. That's a heck of an ROI. And we know it's a good number because the year before it was 89% and the year before that it was 85. So we're very confident of their, that number. Are we getting the job done? I think we are. And if you look at the um, outcomes there, what the aspirations are for the students, more than 50% of those students do intend to go to post-secondary education. One third indicated that they wanted to pursue a four-year degree in manufacturing or, or engineering. About a quarter the, of them wanted to go to a two-year program to pursue an associate's degree in the manufacturing arena. 28% said that they had accepted an apprenticeship or were planning to attend trade school, and 17% said they wanted to go straight to the workforce. Sometimes I get asked, do we want to change that distribution across those different areas? And the answer is no. Our goal is to introduce students to opportunities in manufacturing and engineering because you all need them at whatever point of entry. So here to talk about that just a wee bit more. Oh, there we go. Yes. So here to talk about that process just a wee bit more is our panel today. We are speaking to folks that are involved with Think College and Career Academy in Georgia. It is one of 12 schools that was funded by the state of Georgia. We were funded about a year and a half ago, right? We're in the final stages of our program rollout. Um, this school is very unique. Uh, one of the manufacturers in the community near the school is Kia. So we have Marco Brown here to speak to um, the role of Kia with respect to the school. We have uh, Gerald Wyatt to talk about the school experience itself and how the school's experiencing the Prime program. And then Dr. Wall, our cheerleader with the state of Georgia, made sure that we got the funding to roll out these 12 programs. So let me come over and we'll have a chat. So folks, and we can still hear me, right? We switched over the mics. Um, this is not a question and answer session, right? This is an opportunity for you folks to tell your story. Um, and to tell your story as we seek to attract, develop, and maintain members of the workforce. The SME Prime program, again, is designed to inspire, prepare, and support the next generation of manufacturing and engineering talent. And I'd like to know from you how that is um, being experienced on your side. So Dr. Wall, you were instrumental in bringing SME Prime to 12 schools in the state of Georgia. Thank you. From the state perspective, can you comment on your experience with the SME Prime program and the needs that it has addressed from your vantage point? Well, we currently have 8,500 8, manufacturing companies in Georgia. Uh, they employ over 500,000 people, and uh, that, that industry is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, it's not just growing in the Atlanta area, it's growing throughout our state. We've got new companies coming. We've just had SK Battery uh, come to Commerce, Georgia, which is North Georgia, and we've got the Hyundai plant is coming down to South Georgia. So you know, it's, it's all over our state. We've got uh, new industries. With n these new industries come new, de new demands from jobs. We need new workers. We need uh, workers with certain skills. Um, but there's, there's a shortage of those workers. 
and uh, K-12 education, we're trying to do uh, three different things to impact manufacturing uh, careers. And uh, the first thing that we're doing, I haven't heard of any other states doing this yet, so if some of your states are doing this, I'd like to know. Uh, but we are developing K-5 standards for our kindergarten through fifth graders in every cluster area that we offer in Georgia. Uh, that is uh, done so that we can get students an early exposure to various careers. Uh, and exposing them to manufacturing early on, we think uh, would be very important. With our middle school programs, we're upgrading the curriculum there, up updating the standards, and uh, just uh, creating uh, more interest among our middle school students. With the high school programs, we are again upgrading those standards and updating the standards, but we're also adding that SME Prime to as many of our schools uh, as will uh, adopt that particular program. And we, help, we know that that will help us reach those needs that the manufacturers uh, are looking for. Perfect, and, and we're, we are happy to be partnering with you through that process. That leads us to Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, you represent a very important member of the manufacturing community in LaGrange Kia. So from your lens, would you be able to comment on how having an SME program in the local community at Think College and Career Academy, how has that impacted your workforce? But it has and will continue to make a significant impact and contribution to our organization. Students that are going through SME Prime, particularly at this academy, get the education and curriculum that they are attaining, gives them hands on real world manufacturing. Thank you. Can you hear me better? Oh, that's but this, good. going through SME Prime and Think Academy gives these students hands on real world manufacturing application and insight to the latest technology and also gets them comfortable in a manufacturing environment. Students that have gone through SME Prime and now starting as sophomores and juniors and as they get into their senior year of high school, they're well ingrained in lean manufacturing principles, advanced technology. So the day that they graduate high school, they are already career ready. They're career ready to step into a manufacturing environment and understand what's happening in a manufacturing environment. Now, from a business perspective, what does that mean for us, right? This is a local pipeline of, pipeline of future workforce that is, that is readily available to work with the needed skill sets, the right mindset, and the understanding to be successful within our organization. For any of you who have ever met our CEO, Stuart Counties, he talks about four Ds all the time. There's this stigma that hangs over manufacturing environments. Manufacturing is dirty. It's dull, it's dead end, and it's dangerous. And so now that we have students that are properly educated in how advanced manufacturing is, the latest technology that is used in manufacturing, and the great careers that can come from that, we're able to eliminate and significantly reduce the stigmas that are associated with manufacturing environments. It's been tremendous for us. We're extremely proud to partner with SME Prime, specifically at Think Academy, and we are just excited about what the future holds with our partnership. Thank you. Mr. Wyatt, um, you're the Chief Executive Officer of Think College and Career Academy right there down the road from Kia, home to the Prime Program in LaGrange. Would you like to comment on the impact of the SME Prime Program for your institution? Sure, absolutely. And um, uh, first of all, I'm grateful uh, to have been selected. We're grateful to have been selected as one of the 12 uh, in the state of Georgia to pilot and to utilize this process. It's amazing. Um, uh, first, I'd say that our students are, are being impacted and they're being impacted in a, the way that they're better equipped uh, for opportunities within industry um, that will immediately lead them into opportunities for long term growth in those organizations. Uh, Kia, as uh, uh, Mr. Brown has said, has partnered with us from the beginning uh, since Think has been in, in, in existence. The Prime program, however, coming alongside, um, it provides us sort of a village of support. Um, outside of our general area and even with the out, outside of our state to enhance what we do today, to take it to another level from an equipment, from an expertise, from a, um, a familiarity with processes, perspective, what people are doing around the country. Uh, we're proud to say, we're Georgians, and we're proud to say that we are the number one place to work in the country. Uh, 10 years running, I'm running on the 11th year. We have to get that in, it's a commercial, the government will pay me later. Uh -huh. um, uh, but we're thrilled to know we say that because what makes us successful is that our educational arm 
within our state is so supported uh, by our governor and by people like Dr. Walls. And we're always looking for ways to partner uh, it, with individuals and organizations that's going to impact the long-term long -term success of students. Prime is one of those great yeah. examples. And after being here just a day and a half so far, or a day so far, um, being at the awards last night really has opened my eyes to a whole nother level of what SME brings to the table. We're excited to be part of that. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, when you can give young people um, skills that can afford them a lifetime livable wage. We've changed the trajectory of not only that student's life, but, families. but their families. families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Wall, let's talk about funding for just a second. A hallmark feature of an SME Prime program is that it is funded outside of the school. We've funded programs through the support of local manufacturers, sometimes in a collective effort, and sometimes through a single funder. We've also funded programs through the help of a philanthropic organization or a workforce development entity. In your case, the state of Georgia funded 12 different programs. And we've had other states that also have provided appropriation funding so that we can introduce multiple programs in a single year. From your perspective, how did that work? Can you offer any insights about procuring that funding and that rollout all at once? Well, Shelley, I, I, I just must tell you, we jumped on an opportunity when the opportunity was there. Uh, money was flowing into our state like it's been flowing into all the states across our nation to help alleviate the problems that were created by COVID. So we used some of those funds, uh, or the funds that we use, the ESSER funds and the ARP funds um, that helped, us, well, that funded our 12 programs. Um, we got started with SME Prime in Georgia with a contact made to our governor's office uh, by Rob. Um, where's what? Rob? Rob's, he's, Wait, there, there he is back there. There he is. He contacted the governor's office. The governor's office uh, contacted me as the deputy superintendent for career tech and ag education in Georgia. And uh, I talked with uh, my staff that oversees the engineering programs. And they said, oh my, SME is great, we need to do this. And I said, well, let's make sure our business and industry folks are engaged first. So we met with our Georgia Association of uh, Manufacturers. We met with several of our business and industry folks, Kia, Stewart Countess at Kia being one of those, uh, and several of his staff. Uh, Kia is very important to us. We um, just did a rollout of our five-year strategic plan. And I knew that business and industry needed to be at the front of that plan, leading that plan, and I asked Stuart Countess if he would do that. I really didn't think he had the time to do it. I almost cried when he said yes. Uh -huh. So, you know, Kia is very important in our state, and um, uh, Rob is the reason that we started SME. It was his contact. Uh, we talked to the state school superintendent, said we'd like to do this, gave you know, some uh, statistics on why and how, what it would help with our uh, manufacturing groups across the state. He allocated $4.5 million uh, to this, and um, we should have asked for more. We could have put <laughs> more money. I think he would have said yes, we, uh, but we that agree. money's going away, y'all. <laughs> um, and you know, with these funds, um, it, it was easy to get the money because it was there, but we've had a challenge. SME Prime usually takes three years to roll out. We've tried to do this in about a year and a half, and <laughs> that's, that's been a tight window, but we're going to succeed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, thank you. It, it, your team of teachers across the state, they are so dedicated. They have been so open to us, and even though we were bringing change, and that's, those were some of our table talk topics from earlier today. How do you introduce change? Even though we were bringing change, they embraced it, they rolled with it. They've been wonderful to work with, so you all have great relationships with your schools. We've got some great teachers. Yeah, and, and by the way, I need to point out, Rob is Rob Luce. Rob, you can wave your hand again. He's our Vice President of the Education Foundation, and so that's who we can credit with making that contact with you. All righty, so Mr. Wyatt, I have a question for you. What advantages has your institution experienced as a result of the SME Prime program being funded through a state grant? Okay, um, I absolutely agree with everything that Dr. Walls just said. Uh, when I think about advantages for Think College and Career Academy specifically, um, Think is going into its 10th year of establishment. And so when we opened up, obviously we had cutting edge, top of the line equipment, um, current uh, uh, resources and that kind of thing 
But after 10 years, as you all know, uh, equipment changes. Uh, it, it upgrades, it, it becomes better, it becomes more enhanced. Um, and so we needed a, a way to, to advance our equipment. Prime has done that. Yeah. It's helped us get better equipment, up-to-date equipment, um, to maximize the, the equipment that we have, uh, to get some of that refurbished. Um, it also has given us the opportunity to send, you talked about our educators, to send our instructors to professional development um, in, around the country over the last, this last year. Um, they have absolutely come back thrilled about the exposure, the opportunity, the knowledge, and then the support that they have yeah. uh, going forward. You can't pay for that. When you have instructors uh, who, number one, love their craft, who are passionate about their craft, and then get industry support and, and, and further education within their craft and turn them loose, yeah. man, uh, the doors just, just open up and it feeds right over to our students. Um, I also say the supplies for 3D printing. We do a yeah. lot of 3D printing in our world at Think uh, College and Career, Career Academy. So getting supplies for our 3D printing process uh, that we utilize with the students in our STEM uh, uh, programs. And then exposure to industry uh, professionals, enhanced um, hands-on curriculum. One of the things I heard last night, I, I can't remember his name, but the gentleman that spoke about when he entered uh, engineering school and how boring it was and how awful he thought it was until he got to his senior year and he said, I got to touch something. Yeah. Um, well, we're starting that early. We're starting yeah. that in high school uh, with ninth graders putting their hands to work. And we've learned that the more they are touching the equipment, the more they are putting their hands on the equipment, the more engaging it becomes. It's not just a talking head or a theoretic kind of experience, but it's really, really a hands-on everyday kind of experience is what we're building that curriculum to be and Prime is helping us do that as well. That's great, we, we like working with you. Um, for the folks in the room, when we bring in a Prime program, we are facilitating four pathways of instruction at the school, complete with the curriculum, the professional development, um, the uh, equipment itself, and of course the carve out for student engagement and later on sustainability money, and of course we point the students towards scholarship opportunities. We fund three pathways every single time. Every single time we come into a school, we're gonna fund CAD CAM, we're gonna fund additive manufacturing, and we're gonna fund metrology and quality. So that in the, their first year, students are earning industry-recognized certifications in ninth grade. They are walking away with the value add in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. And then they spend the next two years diving deeper into a pathway that's been identified by community need, mm -hmm. whether that's machining and fabrication, welding, industrial maintenance, or megatronics and robotics. It's uniquely tailored to that community so that's that's the equipment that you're speaking of we mm -hmm. always purchase new and industry relevant equipment equipment that um, mirrors what the students will see in the work world as, mm -hmm. as best as we can absolutely so mr. Brown as we look at workforce development would you be able to comment on the funding model that was used for the SME prime program at think meaning that the funding was coming in from the state um, as opposed to some of our other models, which might look at private funding. Correct. I think this funding model, to your point and Dr. Wall's point and also Mr. Wise's point, I think this funding model definitely leveraged resources to create a sustainable workforce. It, it gave an impactful program that aligns the needs of what the manufacturing industry needed. As you just mentioned too, the equipment that these students are getting, this is state-of-the-art equipment that, that directly ties to what is you being utilized in our manufacturing industries. Mm -hmm. So it makes that communication um, barrier much shorter, right? Because we can talk directly to what the students are being taught in their curriculum with their teachers because they exactly know what we're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, and back to that, kind of changing gears, but staying in the same concept through this model, from industries that may or may not even be able to support sometimes from a funding perspective, even if it goes through this route, definitely look at how can you contribute still if it's through a state funded program, right? Mm -hmm. Almost look at it as a problem and goal statement. If this is our problem, our problem is getting students interested in manufacturing, getting students interested in industrial maintenance, tool and die, whatever the specifics are, come out with your goals and you can still support funded programs through advisory boards, through coming on as a, uh, guest lecturer mm -hmm. so that students can hear that what they're being taught, oh, it directly ties to it because someone from Kia, an engineer from Kia came in and said the exact thing we just learned yesterday or from a different industry 
have success stories. If you have those success stories, have those success stories come in and also sub support the SME Prime and also the, the Academy so that they can see what I'm learning is true value added and I can see a direct line to a career in a respective industry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We'll stay with you for just a second because I'd like to talk a little bit about a little bit more about attracting talent as well as building the workforce. Can you share a little bit about the workforce needs at Kia? Mm -hmm. Maybe comment on workforce training. Um, do you anticipate that any students who participate in the SME Prime program um, with think might later engage with Kia? Do you see that in that a potential there along that pathway? Absolutely. So the first question was talking to the workforce needs of Kia. So our, our workforce needs, just like any other industry, is, is ever evolving. You know, we, our, the workforce needs change almost now daily, but you know, we ha have need talent from production technicians to industrial maintenance to engineering to supply chain to IT to technical development. And the skill sets of those constantly change. And we as industry have to stay on top of that to know how to engage with that talent, how to know what is needed in the future to kind of keep our organization competitive um, and have that advantage over other industries, and, but also know what we're saying to a different academies, saying, hey, this is what we're seeing. Do you have this curriculum? How can we partner together to get the future workforce educated, excited, and recruited to our organization for a sustainable future? The second part to your question was about. Oh, let's see here. Can, can, I, you, can I jump yeah, in? Yeah, go first right part ahead. Go right that, ahead. Um, you said it was going to be conversational. Hey, it's a conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're in the well, living room. Well, Mar Marco sort of sparked something in my mind um, while he was talking about workforce. Um, one of the things that at uh, Think College and Career Academy is that we have part of our, our philosophy is that soft skills are as important as technical skills. Um, and we hear that from manufacturing, we hear that from industry across the board. Uh, we believe that to the extent that 30% um, of our students' grade is based on soft skills. Wow. And the last two years we've implemented a process that every Tuesday, either first or third or second or fourth, there's a lesson taught on soft skills. They're graded on those soft skills. They get 100 points at the beginning of the, of the week and it's theirs to lose by the end of the week. And so if a student gets an A skill-wise, the highest grade if they get an F soft skill wise, the highest grade they can get is a C. So I need us to understand that not only are we connecting with industry to get them skill qualified, but we want them to be able to come to work. We want them to be able to critically think. We want them to be able to be team leaders and leaders and, and work together with other people and communicate effectively. Um, and so that's why it's so important to us. And this is something that industry said to us. We can teach them about the widget. <laughs> we just need them to have something uh, of character about them. We take that so seriously. And, and when Marco mentioned about workforce, that's one, one of the things that keeps their turnover, if they have it, going. Because people don't have a work ethic or, or understand communication or leadership skills or all those things. So we expose that to students very early, very early. We have students, uh, I'll tell you, they're kids, right? So if we have a student that's in work-based learning and uh, that student ha does not do everything according to what's a lot, what's the, they're supposed to do in work-based learning from a assignments perspective, which are very minimal, um, they're disqualified from work-based learning. Yeah. So they've lost the opportunity to, to, to earn 15 to uh, 21, we got some $21 an hour as a student uh, because they didn't do the soft skill part. We want them to understand that it's that important to us and to them and for their future growth. Sorry I cannot know. tell nope. you how many times I have heard, get your students to be able to show up on time and care about what they're doing. So, hear that too. do you hear that? Yeah, no, that, that's, that's absolutely right. Soft skills is probably the biggest need from a skill set and within the organization at any level. You know, of course we would tell you we need somebody that's innovative, mm -hmm. can thrive in a fast paced environment, mm -hmm. has maybe the technical skills, has a knack for learning, but the soft skills are extremely critical. And to, to Mr. Wise's point, you know, we've got some great mentors and some great leaders within the organization that will say, you know, hey, there's free knowledge. Just bring an bring a empty bowl to be poured into. And in order to pour into that, you have to have those soft skills so that we can pour into you and develop you and, and grow you into future leaders within our organization. That's, that, that's a, that can't be overstated enough. You know, mm -hmm. soft skills, soft skills. And I'm sure you all have heard that in the room, but soft skills are number one in probably most organizations as far as what they need from a, a ideal candidate. 
and you're doing some workforce training there at Kia, you mm -hmm. mentioned. I wonder if you would like to comment a little bit on what you're doing and in, in terms of bringing in students from Think, would they fit into some of your workforce training that you're doing right there at Kia? Right, so at Kia we have, it's an unofficial uh, apprenticeship program, but it starts, uh, it starts with the work-based learning internship program. Students will normally come in depending on what their career aspirations are, so they can come in and do engineering, they can come in and have interest in industrial maintenance, they may come in and have interest in uh, business support or business partner role, marketing, et cetera. But more specifically, our students that are interested in industrial maintenance, once they come in through a work-based learning program and once they graduate high school, we get them partnered with our local technical college, which is West Georgia Technical College, to get those students enrolled into their two-year industrial maintenance and advanced manufacturing program. And now they are partnered with seasoned mentors within the organization and they do, they split their time where it's half, half the day they are at school getting their curriculum, hands-on training. That second half of the day, they're at the plant with that mentor using what they learn from the theory-based and to a hands-on plant-based experience until completion of that program. And once, if they're successful through that program, they now have a career at Kia Georgia. And this has been our biggest success story within the organization through work-based learning and the partnership with Think. We have students, you know, and some have come from some tough, you know, socioeconomic conditions, but we have students that have gone through this program has been life-changing for them. They couldn't see their way maybe at 16, 17 years old, and now these students are 21, 22 years old are, are making six figures. You know, they're the first ones to make six figures within their families, the first ones to complete a degree. And if we have some students that have, I say flipped, but have changed their their academic plans based on this, so they may even want to go to you know school for four years and get an engineering degree. Went through this program, got their two-year degree to little or no debt. Now they're full-time employed with us at Kia. Now they can take advantage of our tuition assistance program and, and never let that dream. It may be deferred, but it was it's still accomplished. So now they can still go back and get that four-year degree that they originally aspired to. But guess what? They're debt-free and still a full-time employee at Kia, where they're making great money and can kind of continue to change the life for their family. Great. Mr. White, I'm gonna bounce one back to you and I've got another one for you coming. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you talk, you know, we, 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 we've talked earlier, when we bring in a prime program, we're bringing in the equipment, the materials and the supplies. We are providing the curriculum designed uniquely for the, for the school based on the community need. Uh, we are providing the professional development for the teachers. So it's a beautiful program, but if we don't have students in the classroom, we're not going anywhere. Right. So I wondered if you might want to comment a little bit on how you're pulling students into the Prime program. Thank you, uh, great question. Um, and, and you're right, uh, we have to be able to attract and recruit uh, students into the programs. And because we're a charter program, uh, our college and career academies are, are charter programs, we have a lot of flexibility um, through the Department of Education to do things um, um, a little bit differently, uh, but still meet all of the standards of those particular courses. Uh, SME allows us even more flexibility because they, they have given us, or Prime has given us um, more resources to do, do some of those things that affect all of our pathways. Our pathways are engineering, drafting and design, automation, which used to be uh, mechatronics. We're changing the name a little bit, uh, automation technology, our former instructor is out in the audience, uh, Dean LaRue, uh -huh. he's one of uh, SME members. Um, uh, it was formerly Mechatronics, and then our logistics and distribution. Those are our STEM related um, pathways. And so with uh, Prime, we've been able not only to get equipment um, that's current and relevant, but also to do some uh, attracting. And so some of the things that we're doing um, is, well, let me say this. As, as Shelly, you had, uh, said earlier that the certifications have increased. Yeah. Um, and so one of them is the precision measurement. Right. Through the snap-on tool uh, 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 kit that we received. Um, I remember being in industry and manufacturing as, as an HR director and sitting in interviews with engineers out of, out of, out of uh, four-year college and the engineering director would ask questions about um, measurements and, and how to measure and uh, uh, um, the different tools that were used, and some couldn't answer the question. Yeah, they they went all around it, but they couldn't give a direct answer. And it, it seemed like <laughs> those directors would get so frustrated about the fact that they could not answer that simple question to them. Um, and so one of the things that we now are able to do is to teach our students how to do precision 
uh, measurements, which is huge. Um, you wouldn't think so, but it's a big deal. Um, so that's, that's a benefit. Um, we have implemented fifth and eighth grade uh, tours at our facility, which means that we've always had eighth grade tours, but we went down a level to uh, primary school, to fifth grade, because we've learned that if we get them earlier, uh, by the time they get to middle school, their appetite will be wet. And get them in middle school and they get them even more excited. And then by the time they get in high school, we'll be able to do um, a ha more hands-on things with them. The third thing is we've implemented seventh grade tours to, to manufacturing. Um, one of the things that we found is that many of the parents are not as um, knowledgeable about what manufacturing is. And, and to Marco's earlier point about the, the, the connotation that manufacturing has, when they go to all of these sites, they find, first of all, very clean environments. Yeah. They find automation. They find that the environment is not noisy, loud, oily, dirty. They find opportunities for growth. And so we've, had, we've implemented for this year that all seventh graders will have an opportunity to visit at least four manufacturing environments so that they can actually see, after having gone through our tour in fifth grade, seventh grade they'll have tours, and then eighth grade they'll do more tours again. Um, and then finally I'll say is we have also implemented, there's a group called Be Pro, Be Proud, and some of you may have heard of them, but it literally is a, uh, a trailer of sorts, 18-wheeler, uh, that goes on site to various locations and has various um, uh, technical kinds of professions on the truck. And it gives the students an opportunity to touch and feel and play with uh, various kinds of manufacturing and or maintenance kind of opportunities. We're sending those to every, all three middle schools this year. Um, again, thanks to Prime, we're able to fund that, send them to all three uh, middle schools. That's gonna be one of our attracting tools. And then finally, uh, we've implemented at all three high, uh, middle schools, Paxson and, and Patterson labs uh, for middle schools. Again, those are labs that they can be hands on, touch it, experience it, feel it, so they get excited about it. And then when we go on site to do recruitment, they'll know what we're talking about. That's great. That's wonderful. It's, it's good, to, good to see what you're doing. Very creative, very out of the box. I want to talk for just a second about this interest um, for manufacturers like Kia um, to not only develop but maintain the workforce that they are receiving. So Dr. Wall, your work in bringing support for SMA Prime to secondary schools in Georgia has helped address workforce needs to attract and inspire the interest of young people in manufacturing and engineering. Through their schools, students in the SMA Prime program have the opportunity to develop skills and fields that they might never have considered for themselves, like you are pointing out, Mr. Wyatt. Research, as I pointed out earlier, shows that 91% of the students that participate in an SME Prime program throughout their high school career elect to pursue employment in manufacturing and engineering, with about half pursuing post-secondary education, a third electing to go to trade school or into the workforce. We have them interested. We've given them skill sets. They've elected to enter the field. Now, how do organizations like Kia keep them going from the state perspective? I think they've got to uh, help the employees to feel valued. Mm -hmm. And I know Kia does that, and many of our manufacturers do. They do this by paying uh, certain benefits for them. Uh, employees that are uh, doing a great job and are interested in advancing their careers, oftentimes their education is paid for by a company. I think that speaks volumes. Uh, that's, that says we do value you. Uh, just last Thursday, the three of us were at Kia at a, at a major event over there. It was the EV9 tour. And um, I noticed that many of the Kia employees were able to take part in that. And I think that that made them feel proud that this first uh, Kia EV that was assembled in uh, the U.S. was made right there in their plant and they were part of it. Um, I, I think that that was really important to them. They were there to hear the governor speak, the lieutenant governor, the congressional members, and many other people. Uh, and they, you know, they, you know, it's like this is right here at uh, our workplace. Mm -hmm. I do think it's also important for companies to invest in 
their employees before they become their employees. Uh, just like Marco mentioned, the work-based learning program mm -hmm. uh, and students, you know, come into work part of the day uh, at Kia and other manufacturing industries. That's important. You're investing in your future workforce by doing that. Mm -hmm. um, some companies, you know, are fearful for hiring students uh, under age 18, but uh, we, we've got quite a few companies, including Georgia Power, that is experiencing some uh, great benefits from hiring students under age 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you're hesitant to hiring kids under age 18, talk, talk to me, me talk and I'll me. connect you with some employers that are doing that. Mm -hmm. um, Marco do. also mentioned the importance of student success stories. We've got a student success story that's actually coming from Kia this year. Uh, next, next week we get at our major conference for the year, our career tech conference, and we always put four uh, either students or teachers or a mixture uh, of success stories on the back of our annual report. And this year, one of your full-time employees now, mm -hmm. uh, Riley, 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 Riley Morgan, Morgan. Uh, is one of our uh, success stories. Now, he's not part of SME Prime. SME Prime was not there when he uh, first came uh, and experienced work-based learning. Uh, Y'all were kind enough to hire him mm -hmm. uh, while he was in high school, 16. and then when he went on to West Georgia uh, for his uh, additional training after high school, he was still employed there. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, Riley changed his whole career plan. Literally. He was planning on being a video videographer, <laughs> game game designer. Game design. game design. Uh, is what he planned on being. Going to he's Auburn. from he's from Think Academy. And, uh, but he's decided, no, he wants to do something in robotics. And he is a full-time employee doing some great work. So investing in your employees before they become your employees, I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely, exposure, great. In just a few minutes, I'm, I'm sure there are some questions out there. Um, I'm gonna open it up to questions, but I'd like to give you each an opportunity. What else would you like to share about the role of SME Prime from your lens in not only inspiring, preparing, and supporting the next generation of manufacturing talent in Georgia, but also attracting, developing, and maintaining members of the workforce. And we'll start with you, Mr. Wyatt. Okay. Um, again, thank you for giving us this opportunity. I, I would just add, if anything, that since we are in our first stage, if you will, the rollout stage, um, Although we've not seen the full benefit or ripple effect right. of Prime, we, it's too soon to see that. The thing that has happened, however, is it's given us an opportunity to really relook at ourselves and to ex understand where we are and where we need to be. And we've done a lot of work to make some adjustments, particularly in curriculum and how we roll this out and attraction. And so we're very excited to look at 2025 yeah. and 2026, uh, 2024, 2025 school year and see the students that will come in based on the, the work that we've done so far, and then the success. I'm telling you, I'm absolutely committed to seeing Think College and Career Academy students on that stage from last night oh, uh, with scholarships. Yep. Uh, we I'm, are, I'm with you. Thank, thank yeah. you, Dr. Walsh. Yeah. Uh, we, we gonna make that happen. Yeah, yeah. That's right. it's gonna happen. Um, because we have students on every level, and to Marco's point, Dr. Walsh's point, um, even your point, Shelley, from beginning, this opportunity is literally changing the, the trajectory of these students' lives and their families' lives. Uh, she talked about Riley. Riley was going to go to Auburn University, and when he came through our process of being exposed to manufacturing, industrial maintenance, um, he started to change his mind. You know, going through junior and senior year at Kia, working with us on our side, on the soft skills side, he's changed his mind. His mother was quite upset with us uh, <laughs> that he was not going to go to Auburn anymore. And, and, and we heard about it. She called and told us so. Um, but a year later, after he had made 100 grand, she called back to apologize <laughs> because he found his passion. He found what drove him. He committed to it. And his career is endless at Kia as long as he wants to be there. Um, and, and I'm excited to have those kinds of experiences knowing that Prime is right there with us yeah. to afford it to many other students who will never ever, who would have never ever gotten this opportunity. So for me as a, as a CEO of uh, an, an educator, I'm all about the kids, man. Yeah. I'm all about their success. I'm all about their futures. And whatever we can do, whoever we can partner with to make them successful, um, 
That's what I mean. I'm, that's why I'm in this game. Oh, that's great. I'm excited. Your, your comments reminded me a lot of times schools will use that curriculum plan because it is research based almost as a strategic plan mm -hmm. because it's on paper. You know where you're going. And then that coupled with the year end outcomes reports as schools examine what's gone right, what, what have they, where's the growth been, where might they grow differently. A lot of times mm -hmm. it ends up being the fuel for that five year or 10 year plan Absolutely. down the line. Absolutely. So, my friend, <laughs> any last thoughts? What would you like to tell us? I'll, I will definitely echo the words of Dr. Wall and Mr. Watt. I, we're definitely excited to see the future, what the future holds, SME Prime, the program at Think Academy, and just see students take off and just gravitate towards the different pathways and just be extremely successful. The piece that I think that hasn't been said enough is the industry supporting this, which is, is very critical. You know, I think, you know, getting SME Prime, getting the funding, getting it set up, especially in that period of time, in a year and a half, is it's a lot of legwork to get there. The industry support is just as critical. I, I hate to pick on Dean LaRue again, but he and I, and of course, Gerald and his staff as well, but he and I talk at least three times a week of how to make programs such as this successful. Mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. And when you, whether you are recruiting or, students in high school level or even recruiting a recent graduate or entry level employee, that mentorship is critical. And at that level, especially in high school, that mentorship is even more important, right? Make sure you're putting them with the right mentors. Make sure we're training the mentors and because they're different with, dealing with a completely different workforce, a completely different mindset. And all of this, even with the exposure, working, walking into your organization is completely new to them. Mm -hmm. They don't know the, the systems, the nuances, the policies yet, they are deer in their headlights. Reel them in, give them good guidance, good feedback, give them po constructive criticism, positive reinforcement, and watch that student grow. Students that come through these programs and be successful are your best recruiting tool over anything that you have within your organization. Mm -hmm. If you have a student that has come in and been successful through an SME Prime program at a college and career academy and has been hired on with your organization, they can pull 10 future employees better than I can. I'd That's like exactly to think right. I'm a great recruiter, <laughs> but they can, they, can, they can do a phenomenal job. Sure. As Dr. Wall said, Riley's going with her next week. I, I need to you know, plug Riley with a few tidbits so I can kind of have him bring some resumes or some, some business cards back or some future roles that we have open in the organization. But the SME, Pro, SME Prime program and partnering with Think have been amazing. But in order for that to truly be successful in your respective areas, industry support is vital. You, absolutely. To, to Go ahead, Let me just say this about Marco. I, I tasked my work-based work learning and youth apprenticeship uh, coordinator a couple years ago with creating a mentorship program mm. for industry. Okay. And she, mar she partnered with Marco. They created an actual program that okay. they train uh, industry partners of what it looks like to make it successful. Um, they've been, it's been utilized all over our region in many of our industries. We're present, he's presenting, they're presenting next week at the state conference at GACTI. Um, and it's being adopted everywhere. And I would just say if, if you're interested in any of that part about the mentorship and, and, and how, what that looks like and how to make it effective in your organization, definitely speak to uh, one of us afterwards. We'll be happy to share that information with you as well. That, that's great. Kids need the opportunity to see themselves walking a path that they may have never heard about before, may have never envisioned themselves in, and that can only be done by people reaching out to them and helping them visualize that. So that's great. Thank you for doing that. Dr. Wall, what a legacy for you. Twelve schools in one year. Yeah. Boy, powerful work. What would you like to share with us? Well, um, I don't like to just sit in my office and make things happen. I like to go visit the schools and see what's really going on in the schools. So I have visited many of our schools, not all of them, but uh, many of them with the SME Prime. And there's two things that teachers have been saying about SME Prime that I, I just want y'all to know about. The first is they absolutely love the professional training. Oh. Every one of them. They talk about how great that professional training is and are looking forward to spending part of their summer when they're off yeah. uh, training again this year. Yeah. So, you know, that, they really like that. They see the value of it. Of course, they love the equipment. Uh, and, and they think that uh, the tool in you is excellent. However, 
they said they're a little overwhelmed and especially their students are overwhelmed with all of the to, uh, tool in use. So y'all might want to talk to them about that and see what y'all can do to help, well, help uh, calm down their fears a little I bit in that I area. sure will. <laughs> and the curriculum designer is here in the audience. So okay. We can chat afterwards I mean, I think well. it's wonderful. It's just, just it's a, a lot, lot. Yeah. coming at them. Well, and, and you bring up a good point. One of the things that we do when we do go into a school is we assure them this is a push-in program. We're going to take you where you are and help elevate your program. Program. When we come in with the Prime program, you're not jettisoning everything that you've done before. We're not asking you to do that. We're, asking, we're bringing you resources and knowledge and information helping you elevate. The piece I really like myself is when uh, SME comes in, they talk to the local industry, and that fourth pathway yeah. is whatever the local industry uh, needs are. You know, like six of our schools are doing the mechatronics and the robotics. Four are offering industrial maintenance and we've got two doing machining and fabrication. And they're doing that because that's what the industry in their area yeah. uh, sees as the need. If you come to the game tonight, I'm going to try to remember to wear my earrings that one of these schools made for me oh. on their uh, 3D printer. They're really cute. They look kind of like our logo on our Georgia Department of Education. It looks like a G that kind of has a peach effect to it. <laughs> Made in Georgia. It's kind of cute. Made in but, Georgia. Uh, I'm, I'm just proud to say that Georgia uh, CTA is delivering quality manufacturing for our students and our, our workers through the SME Prime program. Well, you are to be congratulated. What an investment you have made. All three of you, what an investment you have made. Thank you very much for making Thank you. my heart proud. Okay, I am sure, I know we're short on time. In, in theory, we have only two minutes, but still. Do we have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good. Where are you? Uh, Wheeling, Illinois. Okay. So Wheeling High School is a prime school from years ago. I was there a year, about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty impressive school. We've it is. We've gotten some good kids from there. So I'm just curious as how is, um, how is the follow-up? Yep. Like what will it look like in five years once you've moved on to other prime schools and you come back to visit? Is there certain catch-ups or? Sure, sure. And that really is through that sustainability funding that I was mentioning earlier. If we have any educators in the room, there is this phrase, what you count counts. Does anybody recognize that phrase? Yeah. Okay, we count outcomes. So every year at the end of the year, we send them a survey and we ask them to look at what their program has done that year, how many students have been involved, what industry recognized uh, certifications have been earned, um, where they're going, where they've excelled. Wheeling is a wonderful example. They always send in a whole bunch of pictures of what they've been doing. They've been great. They've earned sustainability awards since we created the program available to them. So we ask them, you know, where have you been? Where are you going? Do you need some support getting there? And then we also, and, and, and generally speaking, I, I, to be honest, don't tell, my, don't tell my boss over there this, we've never turned down an application yet for sustainability funds, but we have to, we have to do a little bit more fundraising so I can keep on saying that. Anyway, um, so the, we also have a saying, once prime, always prime. So we're available with our educational consultant staff. Our staff is all educators, all former teachers, either higher ed or secondary. And we're available to answer questions, to respond to needs. The other thing that we're doing is many times the schools almost act like a professional learning community amongst themselves. So we hook up schools. This one is having this experience. Let's hook up your school with them. I've, I've introduced folks to the, to the teacher in Helena, Montana, who's working on machining. Or in your group of schools, in 12, of your 12 schools, one of your teachers stepped forward and said, this is wonderful. We were at Eden Prairie, Minnesota last year, training on Stratasys. And she said, I've got to keep this going. She said, I'm going to form my own professional learning community just for our Georgia schools. And we're going to get together and they're doing it. They're getting together. So it's that kind of thing. We're still small and nimble and really able to respond in unique ways to whatever those school's needs are. Who else? I usually get asked, how do we get a prime program? Does anybody have that question? Call me. Send me an email. Yes. Excellent. Excellent question. 
So the curriculum plan is what we do when the curriculum plan is designed is we call out any state standards that it addresses, any federal SIP codes that it addresses. Prior to designing the plan, we've done a lot of research. We've done a workforce needs assessment, a regional market analysis, and we have identified what we call prime standards. Why do we call them prime standards? Because that's kind of in the education vernacular. Educators are very used to designing programs around standards. So if we call them standards, they understand that we're designing this curriculum plan to meet those standards. Where do those standards come from? They come from the manufacturers. So we are designing a program to speak to the needs expressed by Kia and fellow manufacturers in that community. That's our bias. We are not there to throw out the state standards or to be a substitute for the state standards. But the way that we present the material to the teachers, they have curriculum and instruction folks on staff, they're able to go down that curriculum plan and say, yep, we got that one covered, that one covered, that one covered, that one covered. We need to make sure we teach them about OSHA. We got to keep going here, here, and here. So they still are responsible for filling in the gap, but we lay it out for them pretty easily. No, that's for all four of them. That's for all four. Yep, it's a complete four-year program mapped out over four years. And the other thing that's kind of interesting, um, the curriculum that we utilize for the curriculum plan is Tooling USME online courses, of course. That entire catalog of 500 classes is available to the school. Within the curriculum plan, we do not call out all 500, but the entire catalog is available. So we call out about 200 that line up, it's a curated list, that line up to their pathways. But the teacher can come in and remediate using Tooling U, they can accelerate using Tooling U, and then in combination with that, we have the curriculum that flows with each piece of equipment that we've purchased, because oftentimes those, quick, uh, those equipment manufacturers have created their own equipment and their own related industry recognized certifications. Our goal is industry recognized certifications. We want those students walking out with the value add if they cross the stage with the school they started at or if they have to leave the school in 10th grade. They've spent a year in the program, they're still walking away with industry recognized certifications. Shelly, you talked about standards, uh, yep. our course standards. I, I want this group to know that in Georgia, when we set our standards for any course, any career tech course, or when we update our standards, 51% of the people on our committee to do that has to be from business and industry. Yeah, that's great. And our standards are not just created by educators. Yeah. We've got more business and industry on that committee with those standards than we do educators. Yeah. So it's We're important to us to teach what is important to you for your workforce. Yeah, you know, that was really clear talking to the teachers. They absolutely were concerned about what was happening in manufacturing in their community. More questions? All right, if we have no more questions, Dan, where are you? What do you think? We are, we are four minutes and 42 seconds over. 